Hello, I'm Dr. Karen Horridge, and I'm a disability paediatrician in South Tyneside and Sunderland in the northeast of England. And I also have the privilege of serving as associate editor for developmental medicine and child neurology and for the Mac Keith Press series of books uh, for which organisation I'm also a uh, trustee. And it gives me great pleasure today to be conducting this uh, video interview. Thank you very much, Karen. I am Mena Hadders Algra. I'm a professor of developmental neurology of the University Medical Center in Groningen, the Netherlands. And it's really my pleasure to communicate with you, Karen. Thank you very much. So we're going to be talking today about the Cinder Manual. So can you uh, very succinctly, Mena, uh, uh, let us all know uh, what the Cinder is? Uh, which children might benefit from it and which practitioners might want to use it. The SINDA is a novel instrument to detect neurodevelopmental disorders in the first year of life. So the SINDA, the Standardized Infant Neurodevelopmental Assessment, aims at detecting infants at high risk of neurodevelopmental disorders. It has three scales, a neurological, a developmental and a socio-emotional scale. SINDA may be used by any health professional working in the field of early detection of neurodevelopmental disorders. For instance, it may be used by pediatricians, child neurologists or pediatric physiotherapists. Yeah. Thank you, that's, that's great. Please can you tell us uh, a little bit about your own expertise and your experience personally of using the cinder? Yes, I've been working in the field of early detection and early intervention for more than 40 years. And that means I'm well aware that it's difficult to detect at early age neurodevelopmental disorders. And this difficulty is inherent to the brain's dramatic developmental changes in the first year. Nonetheless, the German colleagues, that is Uta Take, Joachim Pietz and Heike Filippi, and I undertook the enterprise to develop SINDA. And we aimed at creating a tool that would be easy and quick to apply, and that would have good but not perfect predictive properties. And then we were very happy to discover in the end that SINDA indeed is such a tool. And up till now, we've been using the SINDA in Frankfurt, in Basel, in Groningen, and more recently also in Munich. And everybody greeted SINDA with great enthusiasm. It is really easy and quick, and it helps the prediction of neurodevelopmental disorders, and it assists parental counselling. Fantastic. Sounds a great tool. So can you say something about which clinicians might be interested in, in using it or able to use it, and why they might want to choose it uh, over other uh, available tools in the toolbox? Yes. Um, like I mentioned, SINDA may be used by any clinician working in the field of early detection. And what is special about the SINDA is that it's the first instrument that is all around. And by that, I mean that it covers virtually all aspects of development. It covers neurological condition, development in the domains of cognition, communication, fine and gross motor function, and social emotional behavior. Of course, there are other instruments available. And when we think about neurological instruments, the Hammersmith Infant Neurological Examination, the HINE, jumps to the mind. And the HINE and the SINDA equally well predict neurodevelopmental disorders. The HINE 
covers a larger age range. It also includes the second year of life, but we very deliberately restricted ourselves in the SINDA to the first year of life as we aimed at constructing a neurological scale that would have simple dichotomous items with criteria that were age independent. And that's really a difference from the Heim, which has age dependent items. And there are two other differences with the Heim. The Heim pays only a limited attention to the quality of spontaneous movements, whereas the Sinda does play, pay considerable attention to that. And we know now from the general movement assessment how important the quality of spontaneous movements is for early prediction. The second difference between Hein and Sinda is that the Sinda's criterion for at risk is similar throughout the entire age range, whereas the criteria for at risk of the Hein are age dependent, are inconsistently reported in the literature, and are only available for a limited number of ages in infancy. When we think about the developmental tests available, we of course can think of the Bailey scales, the Griffith, the Mullen scales. These tests are really full tests, and that is different from the SINDA. The SINDA is a screener, which makes the SINDA's developmental scale uh, quicker to perform, easier to learn, and also important, you don't need an expensive toolkit. Fantastic, that sounds really accessible. So along similar lines, uh, does the manual contain really everything that you need to be able to learn about the Cinder or do you need to go on a course or anything extra? No, we really constructed the Cinder and Cinder's manual so that you can learn the Cinder on the basis of the manual. And to this end, we have in the manual standardized description for all the items, including information on the preferred position to test the infant in, the procedures to follow when you test an item, and the criteria for typical and atypical performance. Moreover, the SINDA is illustrated by many figures, color figures, and it's accompanied by over 160 video clips. And the video clips are then available on Marquis Press website. And so it means that clinicians may learn the SINDA without following an instructional course. Brilliant. That sounds really uh, helpful and accessible. So how long do you think it would take an average clinician to uh, get up to speed and proficient at, at using the SINDA in clinical practice? Um, in our experience, but of course, it's a little bit dependent how much during the period the clinicians practice. But in our experience, it takes a couple of weeks and then people can really perform the SINDA. Fantastic. And how long a clinic slot do you think needs to be allocated to, to do the whole assessment? Now, so the assessment, uh, the neurological scale takes about 10 minutes, including administration, the developmental scale and socio-emotional scale together um, cost for the youngest infants, that is two, three months old. Uh, it costs about five to seven minutes. And in the oldest infants, it takes about 10 to 12 minutes. So overall, the whole thing that takes less than half an hour. Brilliant. So that's that's a really useful tool then to get a, a quick but comparable assessment of a child over time and and uh, uh, I guess of different groups of, of children and to highlight those those who are at risk. So now I'd like to throw the gauntlet down to you as your opportunity to um, to really say anything else that you'd like clinicians to know to encourage them to access the Cinder. Yeah. 
I think the most important thing, it's a bit weird to say that of your own product, but we really think that the SINDA is an excellent tool to assess infants and to be able to predict their risk of a neurodevelopmental disorder, and it very well assists parental counseling. Um, moreover, it doesn't require expensive uh, tools. And so I think it's also very useful for uh, clinics in less resourceful uh, situations. Excellent. Thank you very much. Well, I look forward to uh, seeing the manual in, uh, when it's published and hope lots of people will access it and that uh, thus uh, very many children will benefit from its application. Thank you for your time, Maya. Thank you, Karen.